Hi, that is Anders Hanola. And that is David Bischoff. We are light nerds and passionate about light and shadows. Lightbybisho.com is the home of sharing knowledge, videos, live events, workshops and much more. After many years of trying different concepts, we have finally found a unique way to help you to understand how light really works so you can upskill with a smile. Lightbybisho.com has five sections with very different types of content. And you're just about to see one full episode from one of the five sections. So, for you to really understand what and how we are doing this, here is a full episode from the Bishop's Bunker section, where David takes a deep dive into the world of light and shadows with no filters. We hope you enjoy this. Fill light. That's a strange pair of words. But most people have an idea of what it is. When we want the shadows to become brighter, we use a fill light. And if we want the shadows to be darker, we use a negative fill. And the three basic methods of fill in a portrait is the terminator fill, the flat fill, and the horror fill. The terminator fill is the very common way of letting the fill come from a bit behind creating this darker line. This border between the two levels of light is called the terminator, both at NASA and in the art community. The flat fill is when the terminator is terminated by letting the light come straight towards the shadow. And the horror fill is what we see people do when they don't give a shit about how it looks. In the studio, big foam boards are your best friends to easily create nice fills. But if you don't have interest or access or either studios or big foam boards, I recommend you to get a collapsible reflector. And everyone will be so happy. That's all you need. Reflector, light in shadows, happiness. And now you know. Run out in the world and fill your shadows. It's so easy. Grab a reflector and become that successful, prosperous and creative photographer you've always wanted to be. Now you can fill that empty space in your heart with love from all your fans to be. Fly, little photographer. Fly. I'm just kidding. Let's go a bit deeper. First, pay attention to the direction of your fill. The angle of the reflector is extremely important. It's easy to think that you should fill from below, towards the shadows, but that might cause horror shadows and we don't want that. A super great tip is to pay attention to the columella. The columella wants to be relatively darker than the nose bridge, always. Otherwise, your fill light will be too obvious, and we don't want that. Keep your fill higher up, and let the columella be dark, and the light will not scream, I am artificial, because we don't want that. But now, let's be a bit more philosophical. What is a bad fill light? I would say that, as with many lighting techniques, when the intentions of the photographer is revealed, it feels fake. The image we are creating is an illusion of reality, and if the unreal components is revealed, the illusion collapses. It's like riding a horse instead of using a real horse. The light must make sense, and that is your responsibility, because you are the photographer that is your main job. I would say that good lighting is like the early stages of a love affair. It's very important to play cool and hide your intentions. The light itself isn't the problem. It is the shadow edges that reveal that you are trying too hard. They clearly show where you have your light sources. So as long as you can hide your shadow edges, you're good to go. 
For example, if you use a small light source as your fill light, you will have a hard shadow that might be tricky to hide and thereby reveal your intentions. And you're busted. And when you're busted, it's like you, as the photographer, are obviously present in the image, hence making it feel like you are manipulating the observer's mind with your too obvious intentions. And we don't want that. By using a large light source, like this one, huge, this light source will create very wide shadow edges and therefore it's easier to hide your presence. Let your talent be the star of the show. The footprints of the photographer must be hidden. Okay, so here we have one light source that is shining directly onto this super big diffusion. This will be our new big light source that will light up the shadows. This is our key light. You won't be able to tell where the light source that is filling the shadows are coming from because the shadow edges are so big. In other words, I have hidden my intentions and the shadows will just go brighter and no one can tell where it comes from. But is it possible to do this with a small light source like this? Because if you have your light source directly on the same axis as your lens, all the shadow edges will fall behind your object and therefore not reveal your intentions. Let's try. Of course, this small light source will create reflections in the eye that will reveal your intentions. But you can't have everything, right? So let's try this. The biggest light source is always the room you are in. Use this wall as our light source. The bigger the lights, oops, here we are. I put my flash as far away from that wall. That way the wall will be as big as possible. Not the wall, but the light source. The new indirect light source will be as big as possible, which will create as wide shadow edges as possible onto our beautiful talent. The first thing I do is to turn off this flash. I just want to see how does this flash look. And now let's turn on our fill light. Can I take a picture of that wall? Here I am. Hello. Oh, beautiful. One more. And the last one. So this super simple concept gives us total control of the contrast. The pro head with the extruding light tube has the advantage that the light will spread in almost 360 degrees, which will make our walls and ceiling into a even larger light source. Wall, 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 ceiling, floor. Our dear friend here, he cannot of course see that light source. What to do, what to do. Flag is too high. And now let's try to see if we can have the best control of contrast ever. And now I have shown you three ways to control your contrast with fill light without revealing your intentions. The bigger, the more expensive, the better. There is no such thing as a free lunch, God damn it! You gotta aim for the stars to reach the stars. Let's look at the fake wrap fill. I actually hate the word light wrap because light don't wrap, but you can create the illusion. And in this example, we have a typical split light. The light is coming from one direction, so the half of the face is lit. And we want to fill this dark part. So instead of just making a random fill like this, instead, shape your fill as a gradient. You have the brightest part meeting the brightest part of the key light and going into darkness in this direction. That way, you will preserve the three-dimensional feeling. So let the parts that is further away from the camera be darker and the parts that is closer to camera 
brighter. This will create this wrapping feeling. And how do you do that? First, you need to come from this side, from the same side as the key light. Now I will turn my reflector so I can create this gradient. Let's see where we are. That's a typical wrap feel light. And this is a typical horror feel on me. And this technique goes particularly well when you just want to make a surface brighter. Always think gradient, not flat fill. It's very easy to make a surface brighter, but if possible, fill it with a gradient to make it less flat and boring. Gradients are your best friend. I am not your best friend. I'm just your second best friend. Goodbye, see you, and don't forget, think outside of the softbox. Thank you.